Welcome to the Fight Night Daily Podcast, the final one of the week. So we've got a grand jury here. Jim White here with us on the left, Adam Smith on the right, and Spencer Oliver has been here all week, of course. Gentlemen, I'll start with you, Spencer, as you've been here all week. Was this a success? As Eddie Hearn has interviewed, the loser in the ring. We've had Frank Warren, clean sleep, sw- clean sweep even. We'll sleep later. Clean sweep, ten, no sleep. 10 and 0, was it a success? Absolutely, I think it's a concept that's going to work. I think there's longevity in that. I think it's great competition. It was exciting. Every fight was very, very competitive, that's for sure. I think that, yeah, I think it was a success without a doubt. You can't moan about the competition that we had there tonight. Great fights. Very sad about Deontay Wilder yeah. the way he went out. But we'll you know come what? To that. We'll get to all that, yeah. But yeah, I think. As a concept, it's something that works. Jim, your Saudi Arabian Riyadh debut with us at TalkSport, have you enjoyed it tonight? I have. I didn't realise I was coming to Saudi Arabia and not going to sleep at any time for the entire (laughs) stay. Uh, No, it's magnificent. It was great tonight, Gareth. It was brilliant. Being up close to the boxing, of course, was something special and a few surprises in there as well. So, yeah, thumbs up. Great. Can I ask for your highlight of the night? Highlight of the night... Apart from working with Adam Smith, Spencer Oliver, and Gareth A. Davis, um, it would have to be Daniel Dubois' performance. He he absolutely performed out of his skin. I thought he was magnificent, uh, encouraged from ringside by his extremely animated father. But uh, no, Daniel Dubois, come on down. You did it, my friend. Absolutely. I'm going to pass to Mr. Adam Smith. I, I, I couldn't agree with Jim Moore. I thought Daniel Dubois was fabulous tonight. Uh, I think he's just grown in confidence. The relationship he's got with Don Charles, not only did he look physically fabulous, but mentally he was switched on and he broke Hergovic. He took his right hands early and he just wanted it too much. He was terrific from start to finish. Great performance. Great win for British boxing. And as for Queensbury, the whitewash. What about Eddie Hearn? How's Eddie feeling right now? Let me ask all three of you, should Daniel Dubois now face Anthony Joshua at Wembley in September? I would say absolutely yes. Absolutely yes. He's earned it, Gareth. You guys say that again, expert. sorry, I didn't hear that. Um, should Daniel Dubois now face Anthony Joshua at Wembley? But of course, yeah, he's 26 years of age. Listen, what we got to remember about Daniel Dubois is, you know, you look at his losses to Joe Joyce and then, you know, you're looking at where his career's going. It is that his level. He goes and teams up with Don Charles, who's not been working on the physicality, he's been working on the psychological side. The kid's 26 years of age, he's improving all the time. I think the Alexander Usyk fight was obviously the moulding, the making of him. He recognised, hold on a minute, I can compete at this level. And Gerald Miller. And yeah, no, Gerald Miller after that, he proved that he belongs at this level. And then tonight, he's gone in there as the underdog, not by me. I don't think, did you, I don't know where we went. But I didn't have him as an underdog and he got in there. And then he absolutely ripped him to pieces. Annihilated him, smashed him to bits. It was good. And Turkey Al Sheik has promised a bonanza at Wembley in September with a big press conference in June. It has to be AJ against Daniel Dubois. Now, after that performance, the Battle of Britain at Wembley September. We have to see it. They sparred so many rounds together in Team GB. It was always a pleasure being there and watching them. Let's see it for real. He's a young kid still, Daniel Dubois. AJ improving under Ben Davidson. Fabulous matchup. Right, let's go to the other fights as well. Willie Hutchinson. I thought he was very, very impressive. Was the underdog against Craig Richards. Showed his skills and showed he's got levels. And that light heavyweight division, Adam, is a very, very strong division for him to pitch himself into in the UK and globally. It was a wonderful performance from Willie Hutchinson. Most people, including myself, fancy Craig Richards to get the job done. Craig, a bit stuck in the mud, never got in a rhythm earlier. Southport orthodox switch hitting. Hutchinson, superb. And he's a character too, which is what I really like about him. The personality, he could be a, a player now. I don't know how far he'll go, but a player in that division, yes. Yeah, Willie Hutchinson was one of these guys, world amateur champion, turned over and it looked like it was going the right way. Then he comes up against Lennox Clark, loses him five rounds and you go, hold on a minute, is this his level? Is he sort of British level? Is he one of those great amateurs that's not gonna quite make it as a pro? 
coming of age fight here against Craig Richards, who's seasoned. You know, he's been in with Dimitri Bivol, jo Joshua Boatsy, pushed them both all the way. But tonight, Hutchinson, wow, what a performance. What an energizer Bunny he is. Let's move on to Nick Ball, Jim, yes. and what a performance against uh, Ray Ford. I absolutely love Nick Ball, but I love Spencer Oliver even more. He's a one-man tornado <laughs> crowd, isn't he? well on Duracell. <laughs> um, <laughs> he can create an atmosphere on his own. I absolutely love it. I think Nick Ball against Spencer Oliver is the next one. Nick no, Ball. Nick Ball was fabulous. I mean, he's a bundle of energy, but by God, he's brave. He, yeah. he, he could still be in there yet slugging it out. I thought he was magnificent. Gents? I like Ray Ford as well. I thought it was a great fight. I think it was a very, very close one. I have Nick Ball just edging it, yep. but I thought Ford is a classy fighter. I'd love to see that again. I'm pleased though for Nick after what happened last time and he, he really deserves to become a world champion now. Yeah, absolutely. Nick Ball for me showed a lot of char character. He underlined where he should be. He should have been WBC champion. Now WBA champion for me. Probably performance of the night and Daniel Dubois. Come on. We've got to give it up for Daniel on Dubois. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, no, on, no, we're, we're, going to, we're coming him. to it. We're coming to it. But Nick Ball came up here and joined us, by the way, live on the show. He said he could go another 15 rounds now. He could fight next week and he could fight in September on the Wembley card. What a character. Yes, Hamza Shiraz. Yes. One of the performances of the night. Had a very tough second round, Jim, yes. but came through and showed how brilliant he is to get a finish against Amo Williams. I thought he was brilliant. He had a great support as well, uh, and they were with him all the way. He deserved it. It, it. it was a great fight. He's a brave guy. I really like him, and he deserved to win it. No one sleeps in Saudi Arabia. We've been up for hours. Yeah, I, listen, I must say about the atmosphere when Hamza Suarez was boxing as well. He brought a lot of people he here. He did. Or he a did. lot of locals come out to support him. The noise was great, and I think that he needed that because, like you say, Ammo started very well. It looked yeah. like it was going to be a difficult night, but Suarez quickly turned it around and proved that he belongs in that world class. Former Young Boxers Rider uh, of the Year with the Boxing Riders Club, Hamza Shiraz. We've had our eye on him for a long, long time, and he steps up in level each time. He looks better and better. This is a guy that's going to become a world champion. He's a fabulous chap as well outside of the ring. Really nice guy, and he fights beautifully. Love his jab, love his right hand, his movement, ring control. Very Hamza efficient. Shiraz, star of the future. Yeah, he. Spencer and I had a row earlier on air, surprise, surprise, <laughs> that, that Hamza Shiraz should fight for a world title next. I have it on good authority. I cannot absolutely confirm it, but I think it works. We want him in against a name next. And there is talk about him fighting Chris Eubank Jr., potentially at Wembley. I think that augments his name. He doesn't have to play the heel. He's a quiet guy. Pitching him against Chris Eubank Jr. is a great move in my view. I think that would be great. I think I think people would back that, Gareth. I mean, just when you said that, I thought, yeah, yeah. I can see that. That would be something something altogether different. Uh, can I just say, Spencer Oliver was clean shaven before this uh, fight <laughs> card got going tonight. <laughs> Go, guys. Chris I Eubank Jr. Yeah, this on. I think it's the Battle of Britain, isn't it? In September, you've got AJ against Dubois and you've got Eubank against Shiraz. It works perfectly. Yeah. Another cracker. Yeah. Absolutely. Fi Go on, Spence. Cheers, mate. Thanks. Oh, well, final yeah, one. <laughs> no, no, we're not going yet. <laughs> Finally, before we go and get those big razors out. <laughs> Can I just say about Hamza Shiraz? Go, go, no, I don't want to. No, 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 I mean, it's a great fight. It's a great fight. It, it's a great selling fight for him to make his name. Oh, yeah. Finally. Hamza just texted me. He's back in England. He had a good flight home. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be on that flight soon. Uh, finally, let's talk about the end of Deontay Wilder's career, which it presumably yeah, is. Five one-sided rounds, very haunted, very gun-shy. A final word from all of us on him, really, before we say goodbye. Surely he doesn't have any more performances in him. Well, he was backed into the corner for five rounds. It was one-sided. He was chopped to bits. And those two right hooks from, from Zhili Zhang, probably the end of him ever in the ring. You said it, Gareth. I mean, you guys know more than me, but it was a sad end. It's as simple as that. And it has to be the end. Malik Scott said to me just yesterday, if he doesn't win it, it's over. So it looks like it's over. Yeah, Deontay Wilder's been a, an incredible character, a phenomenal puncher on the scene for the last decade or so. Probably the single uh, most heavy-handed uh, 
puncher since Ernie Shavers, maybe. Lennox Lewis would argue possibly, but serious, serious power. And he's electrified us at times on a fabulous trilogy with Tyson Fury. But I was here when he lost to Joseph Parker. He was a shell of himself that night. And tonight, I'm afraid, was really sad to see. It was almost delusional the way that he was, he was cracking on this week as though he could become a, another world champion and it all could, could go right. But from the first bell, I thought, Spencer, he just, that the legs weren't right. He, he didn't have the balance. He looked gun shy. He couldn't even deliver that right hand. The timing was off. He just got marched down and it was sad to see because I'd love Deontay Wilder. Yeah, absolutely. I think that boxing has a history of this where a fighter is sort of come to an end, goes one fight too many. Deontay, I think, going back to Joseph Parker, we saw the fight had left him and that just underlined it tonight. Very sad end to a brilliant, exciting career of Deontay Wilder. He's been one of the best of this modern era, but unfortunately tonight it's all over. And it is all over from us, from Jim, from Adam, from Spencer and myself. We hope you've enjoyed our coverage. We'll see you again soon. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.